Okay, what we've got here that I'd like to try is these aspens. Oh, the yeah, these yes. aspens in front, okay. and making sure I've got the pine behind and beyond. So it's it's not an extreme depth of field, no, but it's something you know, I, I want to be yeah. careful okay. with. Right. So first, obviously, is I've got a composition that I've got to work out, and I find that these leaves draping down from above are even closer than the tree branch. I don't want those in the foreground out of focus. So I'm going to focus on those branches up near the top of the frame that are actually the closest. And then I'm going to read the distance right here on the distance scale. In this case, it's um, between 30 and 50 feet, almost at the 30. Okay. So that's my near focusing mm -hmm. point. Now I'm going to focus deeper into the frame, literally as far back as I can see, which is in the deep shadows beyond this pine tree. Mm -hmm. And that says 100 mm -hmm. feet. So my depth of field demand is roughly from 30 feet to 100 feet. Now if you come over closer, so you can see what I'm doing here, our videographer will just have to adapt. Oh, you've got the little red You see, I've page. got the depth of field scale on here. So I can rack the 100 feet over, and I can see that at F-16, I've already got both the 30 to 100 feet. Mm -hmm. But what I've essentially done is I've racked that focusing distance so it's midway between those two extremes. Mm -hmm. Even without the scale, you can do that part. Mm -hmm. And then if I find like I need more, you see mine's a moving depth of field scale, which is one of the beauties of that old Hasselblad design. But I clearly have more than 100 feet and closer than 30 feet at that focusing point. It's not quite so easy on lenses that don't have that depth of field scale. But the procedure is basically the same. Focus on the nearest thing you need sharp. Focus on the most distant thing you need sharp. Racking those two distances halfway between each of them so that the midpoint on the focusing uh, ring of the lens is fit exactly. In a logarithmic sense. In the lens barrel markings, not in actual distance. So you rack those two distances, the near and the far, so that you split the difference on the lens focusing ring, mm -hmm. and that at least gets you at the ideal focusing point mm -hmm. for that depth of field demand. It doesn't tell you what aperture you need unless you're consulting a depth of field scale, like on the iPhone or a lens chart, or if you have a depth of field scale on the lens itself. Okay? So then, if you didn't have a depth of field scale, you'd make a guess about what aperture you thought you needed, take the photograph and then zoom in and scroll around and see if you've got enough. And rather than refocusing if you don't have enough, stop down the lens for it. Because you've already arrived mm -hmm. at the ideal focusing point. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. yeah. cool. So it's not beyond the realm of the doing, it's just unfortunately one more thing, but in this case I would call it a critical element to being able to get a photograph that you want. I hadn't really intended to take this photograph, but now that I've talked about it, I think I probably should. <laughs> And I've got a little bit of an overexposure here, so I'm going to drop it a half stop. Which works well with what's the money. Yeah, it increased a little bit mm -hmm. more, but keep in mind, there's a price to be paid as you stop that lens right. down further and further of the lens softness increasing as well. Mm -hmm.